two boys doing the final cuts on the Allbridge number four at BHP Newcastle Steelworks. The you see the rope slings heading out towards these two excavators. The little one's a 75 ton Liebherr and the bigger one is a hundred ton Komatsu. When the boys are finished doing the final cuts they'll pack up the gear and move out of the way. The, the machines will fire up pulling on the ropes, collapsing that back leg and the all loaders should fall backwards onto skid plates with the arm that's up in the air folding back over the top. But I was here this day and it didn't go quite to plan. What happened was it come down prematurely and the boys were still busy. The young bloke was up in the basket it was his first final cut, I think. He was eager to have a go. And unfortunately, it come down. No one was killed, but um, they very well could have. It's one of the risks that you take when you do this sort of work. Now, there's, there's blokes walking around because we're right up against the Hunter River, keeping an eye to make sure that no bar boats come in side a certain area, exclusion zone. That's where I am at the exclusion zone just watching on. They have a designated crew that keep watch to make sure no one's coming in side the area and to help out with general stuff while these boys are doing the final cuts. Now you're going to see this young fellow go up in the air in the basket he's gonna just about be finished and it's gonna collapse down on him in a couple in a minute or so the the boys underneath it will will have moved a certain distance away there'll be the young fella in the basket the experienced guy down the ground giving him uh, directions and information and uh, when it comes down shortly you'll see them scatter for their lives now the young bloke's going to be up in the air a bit and he's got to get out of the basket onto the ground and try and make his escape so we'll just we'll just wait here and see what happens he's going up in the air so he's a decent way off the ground and it, it won't be too much longer and that's going to come crashing down these two guys on the ground you'll see them running up just in front of the dust the all load is already on the ground and they're just ahead of the dust and the young fella you just see him running towards the end of the basket and she's going to go in a minute we'll just wait for it you watch, he'll, he'll drop the, the torch and head for the, the escape. But I, I still, there it goes, and I still don't know how he survived. There's the two that were on the ground, they're only just getting out, of, keeping ahead of the dust. The all load is already on the, on the ground. And as you'll see when we zoom back in, that the cherry picker is well and truly the basket area is well and truly under some steel. Now I don't know where he was because I'm just scrambling over the fence by now running down to see if I could help thinking that there'd be a couple dead but they're all alert and no one, no one was physically hurt. The young bloke was traumatised and had a lot of time off, off work having therapy and stuff like that but we're, I'm just trying to figure out where he could be because the, there's the cherry picker underneath the, the wheels I think it is he must have made it out of the basket and he would have been running blind because he was in the dust I, I just never found out where he was
that's come out real good on us. Standing 80 metres tall, the larger of the two gas holders has been an imposing presence at the BHB Steelworks since it was first built in 1937. But this morning, its dominating presence vanished from the Steelworks skyline forever. The larger of the two gas reservoirs was weakened at the base and pulled down by a giant bulldozer process spelling the end of a familiar image visible from just about anywhere in Newcastle. The huge cylinders have played a major role over the years and were a significant part of the integrated steel plant commissioned for the power department. They stored the gas which was produced by the coke ovens until it was used in the blast furnaces on a supply and demand basis. And putting them together was no easy feat either. The construction of each gasometer required almost half a million rivets and more than 800 tonnes of steel. The second gasometer will be demolished in the coming weeks.